and journey to all the undiscovered countries, boldly going where no man, where no one, has gone before. In all honesty, I knew absolutely nothing about this novel until Destruction Snake Pit mentioned it in a comment on my review of Snuff. Ho hum! The Long Earth is the name given to the seemingly endless string of alternate Earths that exist because of quantum. Time to put my degree in inadvisably applied magic to use, I think. Basically, this is a Trousers of Time deal, but on a universal scale as opposed to a personal one. So, instead of the difference between Datum Earth, that's us, and Earth 1 being someone somewhere wore his Night Owl boxer shorts instead of his Rorschach ones, the difference is something more meaningful, like sapient life never evolving. With that out of the way, this is a story of what happens when a scientist with a mega corporation sized chip on his shoulder gives everyone in the world the ability to step to those other Earths. Third person past tense, and despite being written by two different authors, the voice feels consistent throughout. Being unfamiliar with Baxter's work, although Stone Spring is currently on my book pile, I can't pinpoint anything that feels like Baxter, but there are a few lines of dialogue, certainly in their delivery, that feel very much like Pratchett. It flows brilliantly and felt very comfortable to read for long stretches. This novel has been something of a frustration for me. Namely, it's taken me longer to work out this review than it did to read the thing in the first place. And to put that in some sort of perspective, I got this novel on release day, which was the 21st of June 2012, and I finished reading it three days later. This review, on the other hand, I started writing after I finished the novel, and I am finally recording it on the 14th of July 2012. Of course, that also, interestingly, constitutes the first of many good points about this novel. It was absolutely wonderful to read. It has been quite some time since a novel sucked me in as completely as The Long Earth did. Not because they've been particularly bad novels that I've been reading, you understand, but they were nowhere near as compelling as this one. The main part of this novel is a good, fun and damn interesting adventure as our main heroes Joshua Valiente and Lobsang explore the farthest reaches of the Long Earth. When reading these parts of the novel, I got the same feeling of awe of when you just look at something and you go, oh wow, you know, that same feeling that I got when I was watching as a boy the trailer for The Adventures of Mark Twain. And I got that same feeling reading these parts of the novel. In addition, on more than one occasion, I did find myself as gobsmacked as the characters by what they came across. Some of it's odd, it's all imaginative, and everything is damn fascinating to consider. This is also where the bulk of the exposition concerning Stepping and the Long Earth takes place. Now, there's always a risk that such things become little more than tedious info dumps, but fortunately, Pratchett and Baxter skillfully dodge this potential pitfall. The exposition is delivered in a way that feels natural, like it's actually part of a conversation people would have, and it does hold your interest. Another thing this novel does well is in showing the effect stepping has on society, both on national and personal levels. It does this via a variety of snippets that do link into the main plot in some fashion. And this is where a secondary plot gets developed. Seen primarily through the eyes of police officer Monica Jensen, it shows us firsthand what's going on on Data Earth and how things are slowly beginning to degenerate. I can't say how or indeed how it ends, as that would be far too spoilerific. But interestingly, it's the ending to this secondary plot that offers a setup for a sequel, as opposed to the ending of the primary plot, which, although it was mostly satisfying, it nevertheless felt a tad rushed. This is a very well-written, excellently paced novel that is by turns awe-inspiring, mildly heartbreaking, occasionally humorous, but always, always interesting to read. The flaws are so few, in fact the only one that springs to mind is the slightly rushed ending to the main plot, and I recommend this to anyone, especially those who like their sci-fi sprinkled with a smattering of fantasy.